What's up y'all, it's Candace, and today I'm showing you guys how to make the viral sweet potato cornbread. It's moist, easy to make, super delicious, and it's great even as a dessert. So keep watching to see how I pulled this masterpiece off. YouTube so I'm about to get the rest of everything together I'm going to get my vegetable oil um, we also have yellow cornmeal which I'll be using where did I <laughs> okay and I'll measure this out hold on and I'll measure out the vegetable oil when I pour this out because yeah and then we have some honey. I like this honey from Aldi because it's affordable and it tastes really good. <laughs> I also want to measure out some all-purpose flour. Um, we're also gonna measure out some all-purpose flour and I'm going to measure out some kosher salt and baking powder as well. Cornmeal. It's equal parts. And now I'm gonna add in three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. And the brand of baking powder I use, I usually prefer this brand. I grew up using um, Clabber Girl. <laughs> I actually never really knew the name. I just always seen the bottle. But this is the one that I usually go for. Okay. So I'm going to add only a little bit of cinnamon. <laughs> okay. So we'll do a little bit of cinnamon. You can also add some nutmeg if you want. So I'm going to do some cinnamon. Okay, y'all, and I also meant to mention that we're going to add some sugar into there, too. Um, let me grab my sugar real quick. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So we're going to go with some sugar. I'll do half a cup of sugar. So now I'm gonna add in a little bit of brown sugar. So this recipe is actually fairly simple, y'all. I'm really just making a scratch made honey butter cornbread. If you don't feel like making all these steps of making the cornbread from scratch with the baking powder, the kosher salt, mixing the yellow cornmeal and the flour like I did, you can honestly just use any box cornbread mix that's your favorite. So if you guys wanna see me do a video more in depth on how to make just a regular honey butter cornbread instead of sweet potato cornbread, by all means, I don't mind showing you, but essentially the sweet potato cornbread recipe is just adding boiled sweet potatoes with butter and spices to a cornbread recipe. And as you can see here, I just finished boiling my potatoes. So what I'm doing is carefully removing the peel. And there's a few ways to go about cooking your potatoes. I know some people like to wrap it in foil after poking some holes in it with a fork and then just popping it in the oven for about an hour on like 400 or something. But me, I just boil the potatoes. Like I start them off in cold water. Um, I bring it up to a boil and let it boil for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes um, allow a knife or a fork to go all the way through. Whenever or however you prepare your cooked potatoes, just allow them to cool down to room temperature before you start peeling them because I don't want you to get no injuries. Me, I've been doing this for a very long time. When my mom makes candy yams, which I have that recipe up on my channel, she would have me peeling these potatoes while they was hot. And I was just like, Lord have mercy. Like, why me? Why I had to be an only child? But all I'm doing is just peeling them, undressing them, taking off any like little debris because, you know, sometimes potatoes be having like stray strings. I don't know if you can see like the little brown string that was at the beginning. Um, little freckles and like little things like that, little blemishes. So 
just like I said, let it cool down. What we're going to do next is just mash these up a little bit before we place it in a high speed blender. You don't have to do that. You can use like a hand mixer to beat it with the melted butter in the next step. But me personally, all I did was just take that peel off, mash up the potatoes and put it in a high speed blender with some melted butter, one stick of melted butter. So you can blend your sweet potatoes either in a larger blender or you can use like a Nutribullet like I did or a food processor, immersion blender if you're fancy. You can even use a hand mixer or a stand mixer. It's so many different ways, but me personally, I like to just blend it in a high speed blender that I have on hand until it looks smooth like that, almost like crazy. baby food because, oh, don't mind my charger in the back, but we do not... We do not want any strings in our cornbread. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. You could just mash it up and just I go just ahead and add some so bowl. But I here. blend it because it's going to ensure that there's no strings in our sweet potato cornbread. It's sweet potato cornbread, not yeah. sweet potatoes and string bread. Okay. So what you yeah. see me doing here is adding all of my wet ingredients um, in one step. So I can just whisk those together and then also add in my um, sweet potatoes that are pureed okay you want to just let those cool down a little bit because you do see we have buttermilk and we have eggs in there we don't want to scramble the eggs we don't want to further curdle the buttermilk you also don't have to use buttermilk if you want you can just go ahead and use some whole milk and i know that looked like some chicken tennis was up in there but as you can see i'm just plopping down my sweet potato mixture like i said i pureed the potatoes that were boiled and peeled with one stick of melted butter so if you didn't see me add the butter and the honey in that clip that's why i did add the honey in with the eggs and the buttermilk uh, but yeah so next i'm gonna go in with a little bit of red and yellow gel food coloring you can even just use orange if you want but I alternated between red and yellow gel, uh, gel food coloring to get that deep orange color. I know a lot of people might not care that it's this color orange, but me personally, girl, I need mine to be a nice deep orange, okay? So you can add in the gel food coloring in that step before I added in my dry ingredients, as you can see. Um, I don't know why I have a very unconventional way of doing things, but like you see here, I just shifted in my dry ingredients, which we mixed in the previous step, which was the cornmeal, the flour, the salt, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, and the baking powder by Clabber Girl. Hey girl. And we're just whisking this in together by hand, old school style. I really could have just saved a lot of time and just added that to my stand mixer, but I just want to be complicated. Um, and excuse the, and once I add in the red food coloring um, and the yellow food coloring, just add it in in increments. You can either go in with some water, like you just saw me pour in there, that looks so nasty, um, which is why I probably recommend just adding it, um, add it in when you add in the sweet potatoes. <laughs> Um, but since the flower is the last step, that's why I decided to add in the red and yellow food color in this step. But as you can see, that, that color looks like Pepto-Bismol, babe. So we're not going to settle for that. I had to go in, like I said, in increments with a little bit more. So I got this color. So keep in mind, I believe how bacon works is going to get darker in the oven. And I didn't say that to sound passive aggressive, but I honestly think that I guess food coloring gets deeper in the oven. I don't know. Um, or it might lose color, but this is the color I'm going for. And it's a nice little pumpkin, almost looking orange. And it looks, it, it was just perfect for me. So like I said, um, I also forgot to mention that I added in the vegetable oil too. So um, the vegetable oil was added in with the wet ingredients if you didn't see me add it in. But you can also just wait to add in the vegetable oil once you add in your gel food coloring. Cool. So as you guys can see here, I have a nine by nine baking dish from Time and Table. Thank you for the gift. And I just greased it either with some Baker's Joy. You could do a little bit of butter. You could do a little bit of oil and dust it with some flour. And I'm just daintily pouring in our batter and I'm going to smooth it out. Our oven has already preheated to 375. And I will be honest, I do recommend that you um, use a 9 by 13 baking dish because as you can see, this is a little bit small. And the sweet potato cornbread or cake at this point is going to puff up a little bit. So <laughs> it might end up looking like a loaf of bread. So like I said, use a 9 by 13 or just a larger baking dish so you can just spread this out and you'll get like perfectly sized cornbread squares okay the texture ended up being um a little bit moist for me um even though you guys haven't seen the finished result yet unless you obviously watch the beginning so you can add in less sweet potatoes or you can add in a little bit extra flour like 
cut down on the amount of sweet potatoes a little bit in the butter step and then you could just go in with a little bit more flour to get a thicker cornbread texture if you made a lot of cornbread you know what i'm talking about um because this one was like a little bit more like cake batter which is why it came out like a cake so like i said the oven is preheated at 375 we're gonna go ahead and get all those air bubbles out and place her on the middle rack or the lower middle rack i don't i don't care what you do honey and then we're going to bake her for about 45 to 35 minutes until she comes out looking like that. Um, and honestly, you're just going to bake it until a toothpick or a fork, a knife, like a butter knife comes out the center or the thickest part of the cake clean. I like to just dip it in the center. Um, and just let that cool down because now we're about to work on our glaze, which is just some butter. I did a little bit of brown sugar. I also did some heavy cream. I don't know if I filmed it and got it in the frame, but I also think this glaze would be great if you did some brown butter. I could do a tutorial for y'all on that as well. I'm just slowly melting my butter and I'm gonna make like a yam glaze, but it's also kind of like a salted caramel, like a sea salt caramel and it's so good. And basically how I achieved this was just melting some butter. Like I said, I added in some brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg and i just added in a little bit of did i say brown sugar already and i added in some uh heavy cream that i didn't include in a clip while the sauce was simmering and thickening and then i just added in a pinch of sea salt once it was like this texture and it just coats the back of a spoon don't let this boil you know what i'm saying just let it get nice and bubbly like that I just was moderating the heat while it was like on medium low. And then once it was nice and sexy how I wanted it, that's when I went in with this fancy sea salt from Trader Joe's for it to be only like $2. This was some good sea salt. And yeah, so by this time, our cornbread has cooled down. We're going to take a knife, a little paring knife that I got from Sam's Club that I cut my strawberries with. And I'm just going to poke holes all throughout. You know what I'm saying? And this is going to allow the glaze to absorb inside of it. And I already digged in because I had to film my little Instagram and TikTok video. Don't use a damn spatula like that. Just use a pie lifter or cake lifter. What is it called? Um, and then I just dig right in. And y'all, I really don't have nothing else to say because I'm still stuffed from eating all these. It was a little bit moist for my liking. I'm a little bit on the sweeter side, so maybe just adjust the glaze to your liking and the texture of the cornbread to your liking, to your preference. But I will give these definitely an 8 out of 10. You know, I'm going to always be honest, and I think y'all would enjoy it if you have, like, a sweet tooth and if you can tolerate sweet potatoes. This is definitely going to be a staple regardless at your Christmas dinner table, your holiday dinner party. And if you guys like this video, if you enjoy my recipe so far, I'm on my creative streak on YouTube. Make sure you give me a like a subscribe a comment uh you know give me all of that razzle dazzle and let me know what you want to see me make next okay i really appreciate y'all for watching my channel is growing at its own pace and i'm not mad at it and don't forget to show me love on my other socials okay love you guys Bye bye